This collaborative investigation between Daily Maverick and News24 has unearthed a possible corrupt transaction with a person that is now the Minister of Justice. I, Tembisile Pumele Lesmelane, swear that I will be faithful to the Republic of South Africa and will obey, respect and uphold the Constitution and all the laws of the Republic. And I undertake to hold my office as Minister with honour and dignity. So help me God. This is an interesting one. Uh, it's a collaboration between Daily Maverick and News24. One of those rare moments where you realize that another colleague of yours have a different piece of the puzzle than you do. And together you have the entire story. And this is what happened. My friend Carl Cowan at News24 and I realized that we could build a story with the different puzzle pieces that we have. The background here is that in September and October 2016, VBS paid a total of 1.66 million rand in kickbacks to Khaliom Razwanani, and he was one of the central people to the entire VBS scam. Razwanani was one of the central figures in the bank's collapse, uh, as found by investigator Mutal and uh, Worksman's report. Razwanani was one of the commission's agents that solicited bribes, said Mutal and Worksman's, from the municipalities to be paid into VBS Mutual Bank. Very large investments that was always followed by a kickback and then it would be followed by a disbursement of part of that kickback to various municipal officials. And Razwanani used his company Gundo Wealth Solutions And it seems from the various documents that we have here, which includes bank statements, investigative reports and indictments drafted by the National Prosecuting Authority, that this is what happened in this case as well. This story is important because at the time, Tembi Smiloni was the mayor of Polokwane. In the meantime, this year, she was appointed as the Minister of Justice. In this portfolio, Similani has direct oversight of the National Prosecuting Authority that has, for the past four years, investigated and led prosecutions of more than a dozen VBS managers and various municipal officials um, and part of law enforcement's sprawling investigations into the collapse of the bank. The essence of the story is that in the same weeks, Polokwane municipality unlawfully invested 349 million rand in a series of transactions with VBS Mutual Bank, its mayor, Tembi Similani, took a 575,600 rand commercial loan from the company that brokered this investment. Now, this loan Similani used to buy a coffee shop in two transactions in October 2016. The payments appear to be linked to kickbacks received in exchange for large investments by Polokwane municipality in VBS. Raliom Razwanani stands accused of at least 13 counts of contravening anti-corruption legislation in South Africa. At least two of those counts relate specifically to the deal that I'm about to explain to you. The deal is very interesting. It doesn't touch Similani through all the stages of the money flowing through until in the end, Similani takes ownership of the coffee shop. So this is how the deal happened. Polokwane municipality on the back of Gundo Wealth brokering this deal invests first 50 million rand and then 80 million rand into VBS Mutual Bank. VBS Mutual Bank then pays commissions, which was termed as kickbacks and unlawful uh, by the Mutal and Worksman's investigation. So they pay two kickbacks to Raliom Razwanani's company Gundo Wealth. Those kickbacks are 755,000 rand, 314 rand, 
and the second one would be two payments totaling 912,000 Rand. Both of these payments were made in October 2016. From there, Razwanani then sent 300,000 Rand to a company called Ricovert. Now, Ricovert was the owner of Sylvanas Coffee Shop, situated in the Fredman Towers in Santon. The second payment was 275,600 Rand, also paid from Gunda to Ricovert. And the total payment for the coffee shop was then 575,600 Rand. And this is the commercial loan that Similani claims she's received from Gundo. Documents, indictments and bank statements that we have suggest that the two transactions involving Similani's coffee shop, Sylvanas, is part of this series of corrupt kickback payments. We sent three sets of questions to the Minister of Justice. Now, she offered assurances of her commitment to the practice of ethical leadership and welcomed any legitimate scrutiny into her affairs, including her private business affairs. The problem with that is that when we started asking very pointed questions, we asked for dates, we asked for why did this happen, we asked for explain to us how you were connected with Gundo and while Gundo was a service provider to your municipality, and this is important to understand, while Gundo was a service provider to the municipality where she held enormous power and she then insisted that she legitimately appointed Gundo as her own service provider, she did point out to us that Gundo was a financial advisor registered with the FSP. Now that is a problem because Gundo was not, a uh, not registered as a credit provider. So legitimately, Gundo was not allowed to offer loans to the public. And in terms of the National Credit Act, and we checked this with a lawyer specializing in credit um, and loans and insurance, is that Gundo had no legitimate exp expectation that he would ever be paid back the almost or the more than half a million rand loan and it seemed to us that there was severe conflict of interest and we don't understand the terms of the loan agreement can you please show us this loan agreement plus the f repayments that you claim was made uh, she went silent she the minister didn't refuse to answer these questions, but she did not answer them, implicitly then suggesting that she, she would not be forthcoming with the information. On the minister's version, the loan is a commercial loan agreement, completely legitimate and completely above board in her words. The minister has strongly denied any wrongdoing. She strongly denied having been involved in corrupt deals with BBS Mutual Bank. She did unfortunately completely skip over explaining in detail with dates and with documents and with evidence that the loan was legitimate as she claims it was and that it was paid back as she claimed it was.